please welcome to talk about uh, common deal breakers, Michael Blakey. Here he is. Uh, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, just to give a bit of background about myself, um, as it was said, I, I, I work for Avonmore Developments, but I'm actually a full-time angel investor, is the way that I describe myself. And I invest in pre-revenue-based businesses, no matter how early, even if it's just an idea, how early they are. Um, and I get very actively involved in the businesses. Now, the first thing I've got to say, when I talk about angel investing, if you talk to any angel investor, if you have four angel investors sitting up on that panel, and you ask them the same question, they will all give you a slightly different answer. Um, there is no right or wrong way of doing this. So what I'm going to try and do is give you the essence of what the deal breakers are for probably 95% of angel investors, maybe with a bit of tweak here and there. So that's really what I'm going to try and cover with you today. And I'm not going to do it in any order. It's just as it pops into my head. Um, so I haven't got any slides to take you through it. Um, I'm just going to try and do it more on the hoof. Um, and if I sound a bit croaky, it's sorry. I, I've only just got my voice back. My wife was very happy about that. But, um, so I'm just going to quickly go through the, the main reasons why you, as entrepreneurs, can sometimes find it very hard to actually raise money. Um, one of the first things that um, I find that a lot of entrepreneurs don't fully understand is the difference in the type of money. If you look at what angels are looking to invest in, and if you're looking at what VCs are looking in to invest in, it is, I would say, quite different for the majority of them. I know we've got somebody like Oct people from Octopus here, and they do do earlier stage stuff. But of the about 1,000 businesses I see, um, I would probably say about 100 to 150 of them I can bin straight away. And the main reason is, as an angel investor, I'm on the whole not, and majority of angels will say this, on the whole will not get involved in a company looking to raise more than a million pounds. Um, and you can conversely say that for the majority of VCs, they do not get out of bed, as they, you know, I think as Naomi Campbell once said, for companies looking to raise less than or, more, or less than 750,000. So, you know, make sure you know who you're investing with. And, and when you're in talking to angels, they will do very simple deals. If you've got to understand the different um, attachments that come with the money. VCs are investing other people's money they will have to go through a very rigid um, process before they'll put any money in. You will find with angels, because they'll do slightly earlier deals and it's their own money, they're much more likely to willing to take a punt. So if, you, if you're going to um, a VC and you're saying, I want one and a half million pounds, I've got this idea, but I don't have a product, I don't have any revenue, then 99% of them will say, we really like your idea, but come back to us in about a year or two years' time when you've got some revenue. Um, and you're just wasting probably their time and your time. You know, so if you're a very early stage business, on the whole, look to raise, you don't, nowadays you don't need to raise more than a million pounds as a startup. Certain sectors that might be different, but on the whole for technology-based businesses, you don't need to raise that much money. So you're going to go down the angel route to start off with. Um, the, the other thing that I see, I, I see about, I would say, three to 350 presentations a year. And I am amazed to um, say this, but I would say about 75% of the businesses don't describe their business within the first two minutes of the presentation. Now, the way I always explain it to people when I'm talking to them about what they should do when they're preparing for, to do a presentation is that um, it's like an interview. Even though it's, I'm sure the lawyers will say this, it's illegal to make up your mind, you, most interviews are, are over within the first, I would say, minute of them actually happening. You've made up your mind. And it's the same for a presentation, especially for somebody like me who sits through so many of them. Um, you, you, you have a minute or two minutes, and I want to hear what is the problem you're solving and how you're going to do it. Um, you can give me the rest later, but I need to know what the, 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 the problem is. And it even gets worse when um, I once saw a business plan. It was one of the best presented business plans I've ever seen, 100 pages. For a startup 
business, you do not need a 100-page business plan. Your business plan should be 20 or 30 pages maximum. But what was amazing about this business plan, and I have to say I did read it from back to front, or front to back even, um, twice, just because I, I just couldn't believe it. At the end of it, I didn't actually understand what, that, what they were doing. I didn't actually understand what the product was. It was a te so technical that I was sitting there. I didn't understand the problem. I didn't understand. And I was thinking, how long have these people actually spent um, writing this document, which, as you all know, is a, you know, entrepreneurs, your business plans will change, especially at the beginning of, of the life cycle of your business, probably every week, if not every day. So don't get too caught up. The most important document that you're going to have is actually the executive summary. That, that is what you're going to be sending. That's what you should be sending to investors to start off with. And then if they're interested after that, your business plan will, um, you can send to them. And you can guarantee that the majority of angels will help you rewrite your business plan before they make any sort of investment. Um, and getting a deal done, um, David Caskell, um, who spoke earlier, was actually one of the, the companies I invested in. Um, and one of the reasons I think that he took our money, as, as, as well as others, is that when we went to him, I took a whole, the, the, the whole syndicate was already formed. Um, it is very, w w the first person that you want to find as an investor is your lead investor. It doesn't have to be the biggest investor um, that uh, is, is, is of the round that you're raising, but it has to be somebody that can pull everybody together. Because as, we t as he talks about it, it took him a year to raise money, and it can be quite, and that is quite a short time to do it, but if you're trying to raise money from 10 different individuals, um, and they're all asking questions, it means that A, you're not gonna have any time to run your business, and B, to get it across the finishing line is going to be extremely difficult. And most lead investors have, would have had experience of doing one or two deals, so they know how they can save themselves and thus the company money, and can, they can get the deal across the line. Um, and I think that is actually quite critical. So don't go and just talk to anybody and everybody and try and say, well, we've got 10 people interested. If you don't have somebody who can actually get the deal done. Because what it will mean is that all the questions will come through one person and not through 10. So you won't have to spend all of your time um, running around answering probably the same question 10 different times. Now, if you talk to any angel and they say, what is the key reason why deals don't happen after you've got the investor interested? Pretty much every single time they will say, valuation. We couldn't agree on the valuation. I probably would say for myself it's about 75% of the time after I get um, really excited about a deal and I start talking to the, the entrepreneur um, and it's something I try and deal with as early as possible. But you have to realize is that whilst for, in your mind it is a guaranteed 100% success that this is going to be make money, it's going to be the next Google, it's going to be the next Facebook. I see a thousand businesses that are saying, telling me exactly the same thing. Um, and it's important that you have um, all the confidence in the world, but I've been doing this for 11 years now. I'm maybe even overly cynical, but I'm very cynical about it. And I want to make sure that the companies that, are, that I do invest in, that do end up being successful, can actually pay for all of my companies that I invest in that aren't. Um, so in regards to valuation, do not come and say, I'm a pre-revenue based business and I am worth two and a half million pounds pre-money and I'm raising half a million. Um, I will promptly say to you, well, thank you, but no thanks. Or do you know I can buy myself an absolutely massive mansion in the centre of London for, for, for your idea? Um, and the important thing is, is when you talk to the lawyers or you talk to your advisors, try, or, or you just go to, an, you talk to other entrepreneurs, try and get a feeling for what is a realistic valuation for your business. Um, there, is no, there is no way you can value a pre-revenue based business on the whole. You can do finger in the air stuff, you can do everything. So you, don't say the company's going to be worth five million um, in two years time and I've just worked it back now and, or I'm going to give away a certain percentage of it actually ask the investors, say, what do you think the value of the business is? 
talk to a number of different investors, and if they're all telling you roughly the same amount, that's probably what the value of the business is. Um, and if it's not the value that you want it to be or need it to be, look at what actually would, you know, what are the valuation milestones within the business. A lot of companies do not understand what actually will add value to the business, be it somebody with it, working with it with industry knowledge, somebody, a contract, revenue, whatever, try and understand where that's coming from. Um, and also, 